I'm so, take the take the little cork out and be sure that feed is turned up. If you turn that feed down, which I've seen some people that uh, advocate that you do, then the bees are in here. One or two of them might die and fall down in that open, and the queen will never get out. So you always want to turn that up, and then when they, if any of them die, they'll fall down the bottom, and it won't obstruct her from coming out the top after they've eaten that. And I'll stick that down in there. One shot. One other suggestion I want to make. Be sure you have, in this brood that you put over here, you have some eggs. Leave some eggs in here. And in case they kill a queen, this queen, or this queen blows out, something happens, you'll have eggs there for security to them to raise a queen. You won't be that far behind. You won't have to wait and order one, wait for it to come in and all that. They'll be uh, raising them a queen. If you have honey to build from, then you'll want to take four of these empty frames out of the center and set them aside and get four frames out of the honey of this mother hive that you're building from and put them over there and then put your empty frames back in. That way they'll have feed and, uh, and these will still have enough honey to keep going. Reassemble your equipment. And go to the next one. One thing I failed to tell you, when you start this operation, you want to smoke that mother hive. Two or three gentle smokes. Just two or three puffs, not much. You don't want to get them, smoke them enough that the queen will start running in there. But you want to smoke those guards just a little bit. And if there's a hive on either side, it's in a close proximity of it, you need to smoke them a little so those guards won't start getting something stirred up that, that you can't handle. And then, as I say, when you get that done, you go to the next one. Any questions? I had a took a few pictures. It's self-explanatory on the back. I gave you a printout because I thought like there might be some here as hard hearing as I am, and you wouldn't hear me. And then uh, I had it in big print, so if you forgot your bifocals, well, uh, you won't have an excuse. How long do you leave those uh, hives in that position? Sir? How long do you leave those hives in that position? I'll leave them there 30 days at least. Okay. Now you can pick up that hive you build and move it that Very day long. at least a mile. Okay. Uh, not less than a mile. Okay. But I'll leave them like that and then some of the field force will hit that one and some will hit this and it'll keep them both pretty strong. You do this in the middle of the day? Well, I do it if the, when the weather's nice in the, in the morning plum till sundown. Okay. I'd rather not go after sundown, though. Okay. Any other questions? You always transfer that queen to the new box. I found that that's best. That's best. I've, I've split a lot of hives, and it always works best that way. All right. We've covered that. I want to tell you two other ways to split it. I won't do any demonstration. You take one frame of brood out of this mother hive and put it in this hive. Then you take every frame with this frame handle like this. Well, you get the queen on that, on that one frame. Put it in this hive body here. 
get every frame out of here and just go here and just do that. It's called shaking them. And you shake all the bees off in that hive and the older bees will come back here and most of the field force. And then you take that hive and move it at least a mile from there that day. That's another way you can split them. The third way you split them, you get your get you some hives and set them in a different location to what your apiary is at that time. And uh, take two frames of brood and put them in every one of those hives that you're going to build. Say you're going to build 10. Put two frames of brood in each one of them. Then you have to have wet supers. Take wet supers and put an excluder over the top of your hive. You may have another excluder down here, but put the excluder on top of your top super. And then get around the front and just, yes sir. While you're there, explain wet supers. So Explain what wet supers are. Oh, wet supers are supers that you've brought in with honey in them and extracted them, and they'll have a lot of honey still on the comb, and that's called a wet super. You take it then, you put that screw on, put the wet super up there, and you get around the front and really smoke them. I mean, really smoke them. Well, just in three or four minutes, they'll go up there and start eating honey. And they'll stay up there gorging themselves on honey, and you just take that those supers that you smoke bees into to that other location where you have two frames of brood in each hive, and uh, just set them on there. And boy, they'll they'll build you a queen in a hurry. And, uh, I've done it every way, and I've had uh, probably the best success uh, in that last procedure that I told you, taking the wet super. But I don't always have wet supers, especially in the early spring. So I'll use this first method that I told you about. Any other questions? And can you uh, split these any time of the year? No, sir. No, sir. You want that? It needs to be a honey flow on. Okay. I wouldn't ever start it before the 1st of April. And I wouldn't do it any later than the 1st of August. Okay. And that'll give them time to build up for the winter. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.